So what makes the time and effort of designing and installing a profile worth it? Well, it's going to let us take advantage of the more than 100 years we've spent flying and the more than trillions of dollars that have been spent taking the complicated systems of modern fighters and making them simple and easy for pilots to use. This increases situational awareness. It allows us to do complicated things in a very simple and quick way and to put simultaneous inputs in. Now, many of us play Star Citizen and we play it alone or with a couple of people. When I'm talking about Star Citizen as part of a very large org, I'm talking about what we're gonna be able to do in the future when we have large organizations and large group activities. So this means that we'll need to be able to fly in direct support of each other and to be able to fly in a way that lets us move, shoot, and communicate together. You know, herding the cats. Well, in order to do this, we need a systems-based approach. And that's what all the time and effort of all the years of flying and all of the money have come down to. And I don't want to make a star citizenship a fighter jet from today's era. I want to respect the future technology and where we are. But we can take a systems-based approach and we can use that as a baseline to transfer what we know now to how it would be used in the future. And one example of this is the shields and how we manage them. At least as far as we know, no modern fighter jet has shields, but we do need a way to manage them because it's important to take direct defensive action against where our most direct threat might be coming from. In addition to all of these things, I think it's also worth it for the immersion factor. Immersion is very huge to not only Chris Roberts and this project, but when I fly with a uh, joystick, I feel more like I'm in the game. And I feel like I am more flying the ship and get lost in the moment, which is the point and part of what entertainment does, but it also lets me do what I enjoy the most. And that's teamwork and working together. So follow with me as we go through the design of this and try to adapt what we know now to the future and how it can be used in Star Citizen. Where we are today started in 1903 with the Wright brothers' first flight of an aircraft. Less than seven years later, Lieutenant Fickle grabbed his rifle, went on the wing of an aircraft, and fired the first known shot from an aircraft. In 1950, the Lightning fighter jet was the first jet introduced with the HOTAS joystick concept. This design was designed to keep your hands on the throttle and stick, to keep the pilot's eyes up and looking out of the cockpit and not looking down and trying to operate systems they couldn't see while flying. This simplification, the easy use and the quick access was needed to make sure that pilots were more combat effective. In modern systems and in modern fighters, they break these systems down into different names. And we're gonna take a look from here on out at each one of those. And we're gonna start with the Threat Management System or the TMS, as you can see here. This is the Threat Management System. The Threat Management System is designed for you to be able to handle targets that are enemies and to be able to find your friendlies. Because identifying the friendlies from the foes and knowing who you should and shouldn't shoot are very important. On here, you're going to see that we have four functions in white and four functions in yellow. The functions in white are the, mod or the primary state that when you press the button, that's what happens. A modified state is engaged when you press this lever on the HOTAS Warthog and this button on the T-16000. With the modifier button pressed, the primary button changes to the modified state. So you get two functions out of each button. In this case, we have the target under reticle so that you can lock what you're looking at. We're gonna not only be able to find our nearest hostile, but we're gonna be able to cycle between them so we can identify a specific threat that's been called out or that we're looking for. Cycle our friendly so we can find someone that's in trouble or our wingman, and ultimately to be able to unlock a target. So again, the threat management system in red is designed to be able to handle your targets and to be able to basically, in this case, we're doing a radar-like function. In a modern fighter jet, it's a separate function that you get into. 
Um, but for Star Citizen, at least at this point, it's not there. The shields management system in blue serves two functions as well. The primary function is to be able to manage all of your shields, forward, back, and your left and right. Now there are mappings, I can't seem to get them to work in Star Citizen for top and bottom. We'll see what happens in the future, we may have to make some changes. But as of right now, the modified state is working with the threat management system for the pinning process. So we'll be able to pin our targets, to cycle pin targets and unpin them. Now in the modified state, we also have the ability to reset the shields, which is an important thing in case you've made some changes to help take the impact of fire coming from a specific side. And now you need to make that back to default or maybe you change it to another location depending on your orientation to the threat. Now let's take a look at the countermeasure management system or the CMS. CMS is in all modern fighters as far as I'm aware of. And in this, we're going to specifically be able to control the countermeasure systems to avoid a missile. So we now have as of 3.12 decoy and noise. And we also have the ability to set a burst rate size for the decoy. So in the primary state, we can select a decoy or noise without having to select any modifier. We do have another addition to TMS on here because Star Citizen is not using a data management system where you could go to a specific multifunction display with a system on your joystick and allow you to cycle between those systems. So they have a large number of buttons and it exceeds what most fighters do to do some of the similar things. Now I'm not knocking it, there may be some greater goal but I do think they should look at some of the systems like we are and adapt them a little better. Anyhow, getting back to it, we have sub target and look behind on our primary states because I believe that these are gonna be important things. Sub target is more related to target management system. I do be, believe look behind is a little more related to your countermeasures. In the modified state, uh, we can increase and decrease that burst size. We can reset the sub target so that we can go back to targeting something besides just the engines, which we can currently, and then cycling our camera for an external view. Next, we're gonna move on to the power management system or PMS. This is another example of taking where current systems are in current fighter jets and adapting to something in the future. The power management system is going to allow us to prioritize the power towards what either our weapons, our shields, or our engines at this time. I've kept this in here because I believe in the future this could be very important, especially if you're trying to boost your shield power and your shield direction at the same time. This is something you're gonna to wanna to be able to do very, very quickly. In addition, the modified state is going to work for a couple different things here, trying to maximize what we can do. We are going to be able to uh, up and down uh, as a modified state, take care of the scanning, narrowing and widening that, widening that beam for what I presume is a more refined search or a more broad search, trying to identify where threats are generally, or maybe something in an area more specifically, either for distance or for more resolution in that scan potentially. We also have another TMS-like function on here in being able to cycle your missiles. So changing from the current missile that you have to a different missile for a signature reason, or maybe you just want a bigger punch for a bigger target. In this next section, we're gonna be breaking away a little bit from a systems design and going into the fire groups and into the scanning mode. Now we are trying to incorporate a system and maximize our buttons, but the buttons will change what they do when you're in scanning mode versus in a firing mode. So in the default mode, when you pull the first fire group, the first fire group assigned to it is going to fire. The second is going to fire when the second is pulled. Now on the Warthog, it's a two-stage trigger. When you pull it to the first stage, the first stage goes. When you pull the second stage, both stages fire at the same time. On the T-16,000, if you wanted both to fire, you actually had to press two separate buttons. You don't have a better solution for this at this time. However, when you're in scanning mode, the scanning mode is going to change it so that in the first stage, you're going to activate the scan. When you point this at a ship and activate the scan, you're gonna get information about the pilot, the cargo, and other things that are useful. In the second stage, you're gonna be able to activate that scanning radar ping that lets you identify things beyond what your current radar or sensors are letting you see. In the flight management system, we wanna be able to control all of the relevant functions for the aircraft. 
and whether you're using the T16000 or the Warthog, this is the same. Increase your speed limiter or decrease your speed limiter is on the primary function and increase or decrease your thrusters is on a modified state. I found this useful for slightly more precision flying or you wanna do a little bit slower landing, a little bit softer. We also have on the primary state our decoupled and cruise control. And then on the modified state, we have G-Safe and VTOL. Things I think you'll need, but probably use less often. The flight management system is a very important system. And on the Warthog, there are not enough analog rotors or axes to allow you to have the speed limiter and the thruster on those. However, on the T16000, there are enough rotaries that let that happen. So to keep things unified, we've kept the flight management system intact on both, but where possible, I've given you the ability to use them as an analog axis. Which one you choose to use is up to you. You could bind them to something else, but in this case, you at least have that secondary option. Well, now that we've covered the threats and countermeasures and how to fly, we need to talk about communication. And unfortunately, the T-16000, I haven't worked out a way yet to have more than two ways to have a PTT or push to talk. Now, again, when you're flying with a small group or a couple of people, you can have a single open comm line and you can all communicate freely and probably not walk over each other too much. However, if you were with a larger group and you were performing a bigger function, you have a group trying to move to a location and maybe take out a bunker. Now you need to have your individual flight groups talking and communicating at the same time that potentially your ground units are talking. So you need to be able to have communication simultaneously without walking on each other. That's gonna necessitate another channel. The more groups you have, the more functions you have going on at one time, the more channels you may need. You may need a command channel, you may need a ground command channel, an air ground or an air command channel. You may need a channel dedicated to all the flight units to be able to talk to the different flight groups who are performing different functions at different times. So again, when we're talking about uh, larger orgs and any kind of org op, the, actually regardless of the size of an org, if you're communicating multiple things, you're going to need more than one push to talk. On the Warthog, we have three primary push to talks, and then we also have a VoIP for in-game comms. Now again, this is assuming you're using, as needed now, some kind of communication program, Mumble or Discord. Now on each of these two profiles for both the Warthog and the T16000, there are additional functions that are bound to either other buttons that are not hat switches or to the base of the profile. In this particular system, for both the Warthog and the T16000, we have covered seven basic hat switches or four-way switches for the Warthog and six for the T16000. On the T16000, we do not have a power management system because we don't have enough hat switches or four-way directional switches. Where possible, I've put those other functions on the base of the T16000 or in a non four-way hat switch. So if you think about it, you don't even need to remember all of the things on each of these systems, you would be beneficial to just know where those seven systems are. So if we're talking about your flight management system, your shield management system, your countermeasures management system, your power management system, or your threat management system. If you remember the location of those seven different four-way hat switch or systems, you're gonna generally know whether you're gonna be able to target and attack something, whether you're gonna be able to defend yourself with shields or countermeasures, or whether you're gonna use your power management system. Now, on each joystick, there are different things available in different locations outside of those hat switches. You will need to take a look at those and memorize those as you use them. In conclusion, these profiles should allow you to be able to move, shoot, and communicate with your friends, teammates, org mates, whether you're in a small group or a large group, more effectively. If you ever decided to go do a flight simulator like I do to fly a modern fighter jet, the layout of these systems and the system concept itself will give you a head start for those who have not. This integration will also allow flight sim pilots to pick it up, go into Star Citizen, and have a basic level of familiarity. Now again, 
shields and power management are not something that are known to be on a modern fire jet in the way that we see them in Star Citizen. So I hope that this profile helps. Please leave any comments or questions you have in the um, comments below. I will be looking at where the game is, what options are available, and the feedback that I get on these profiles to try to adapt them to how the game changes and what things we find. I've taken considerable time to try to bring what I hope is a valuable profile, but I also am very open to input because a lot of my org mates in Star Citizen at Atlas Defense Industries have given me things that either I didn't know about or a little bit better ways of doing them. So it is a fluid concept, but we're going to stick to the concept of a systems based and working it through that. Anyhow, I hope you enjoy this profile. And if you decide to support this, please like and subscribe or consider giving to Patreon. Yeah.